Hi guys and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. This one is by request. A chap asked me if I would cover in some more detail what it takes to build a C++ application to use ESP32. So let's get started. I'm going to assume that you have a Linux or some other development environment in which you can build regular C-based ESP32 applications using the ESP IDF. Okay, so we're going to start by cloning the normal template application that we normally use to build a normal C application. So here we do a git clone of Espressif's template and I'm going to call this project, I'm going to call it CPP3. C++ uh, number 3 because I've got a couple of samples 1 and 2 and I'm unimaginative and we'll call this one 3. So we execute this, this git clones uh, into our new directory called CPP3. I change into CPP3 and as we normally do I run my make menu config. Now nothing special needs to be changed here. I'm just going to customize it for the way I like it. I'm going to change my baud rate. Yes. I'm going to say I want to use compression. Yes. And I'm going to change my log levels uh, to verbose and no colors. And that's all I need to change. That's just preference. That's just personal preference. So now that we have uh, changed our uh, SDK config through the make menu config. I'm now going to run make minus J5 and what this does is it just uh, compiles the ESP IDF and it does it in parallel so it uses up to I believe five, four or five jobs to compile it very quickly in parallel. So I'm talking while that compiles and we're done. So at this point, we now have a regular C-based environment where we can now edit the code. Now, I we can go in here and use a VI or your other favorite editor like Genie, but I'm going to use Eclipse here. So I'm going to say file new uh, C++ project and select a make file, an empty make file project. And now I specify the name of the directory that we created which uh, from the from the uh, ES Espressive template. Uh, next and finish. And if we look in here, what we find is the code that was generated for us and built for us from downloading the ESP template and giving it a compile. Well, that's great. So now I'm going to delete the main.c file. This is the main.c file which is brought in for us when we clone the template app. But since we're not building a C file, a C project, we're going to build a C++ project. So I don't need that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy from my ESP32 snippets and the links for these will be in the YouTube description. I have a sample here called Hello World. This is a sample C++ main file. So we'll put it in there and then later on we will walk ourselves through it. But for right now I just want to paste it in place. So at this point, we have a build environment which is absolutely perfect for building C, C programs. So we need to change this to create a build environment for building C++ programs. So we bring up the properties of my project and we go through some steps. So first of all, in my build settings, I'm going to say uh, don't use the Eclipse build environment, use the glow, use the external environment by running make. Well, that's easy enough. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify where we should look for header files. Now, there's many, many of these header files. These are the expressive header files. And uh, rather than type them in, because there's a lot to type in, um, what we can do is we can take a set that I have pre-built and again, uploaded into the ESP32 snippets. And it's in the Eclipse folder. And I'm going to copy the path to that file. Copy the path. And now in my project settings from our CPP free project, I'm going to say I want to import that path there, hit the finish button. And now if we go have a look at what we have, we shall find that we have a bunch of 
directories for looking for header files. That's great. And there's one final thing that needs to be done in our project. We go up to properties again and uh, in the indexer tab, no, that's not right, in preprocessor includes, no, no, yes, in providers, preprocessor includes providers, we select the uh, uh, CDT GCC built-in compiler settings here and we change this to be our extensa ESP32 ELF GCC setting and this basically says that uh, the extensa ESP32 compiler is going to be run to generate the compiler settings which are going to be read by Eclipse in order to determine the location of some of the include files. So I hit the OK button on this and uh, what we will now find is that if we open up our Hello World programs, we see that uh, we are greeted with some warning errors, and that's because we haven't yet run a rebuild of the indexer. If I say that I want to rebuild the index, if all has gone well, those errors have gone away. And now, now after those steps, we're ready to code. So this is the sample program that we brought in, and I'll take us through this in detail. Uh, this is just a C++ program, and I'm, my goal is not to teach you C++. And what we do is we have our app main entry point. Now the app main entry point is where control is given when uh, the ESP32 starts up. It looks for a Fun a method, a function, I'm sorry, a function called app main. But if you've studied C++ at all, you may have heard a concept called name mangling, name mangling. And what that means is that in C++, I can define a function called f, which takes an integer. Great, there's a function called f, which takes an integer. And I can create a function called f, which, for example, takes a double. Okay. So there's two functions with the same name that take different input types. And depending upon what parameter I call that function with, the correct function will be called. So if I call f and pass it as a parameter an integer, this function will be called. And if I call f and pass it a double, this function will be called. Now, in C, you can't do things like that. So how does the compiler know which function to call? And the answer is that when this function is when this code is compiled, two functions are created, but they're not called f. They're not called f. Instead, they are decorated or mangled to include the parameter types expected by the function. So this is what's called name mangling in C++. Now, by and large, it doesn't show up for us. However, if we're calling from a C program, this app main function is not actually called app main. It's called app main with some kind of mangling that says it takes as a parameter a void. So the solution for this is this extern double quotes C and what this does is this declares the name of a function to have C bindings so this function will be exposed without name mangling and that's the secret sauce in order to call the app main function from outside of a C++ environment so, looking at this, so we've created a C++ class, it's called greeting, it's got two methods in it, hello English and hello French, and it's got another method called set name, and name is a private variable. So, for example, when I create my greeting class, I can set the name to be my name, and then I can call the method hello English, which will echo hello my name, and if I call hello French, it will... Uh, log bonjour and my name and there we created a class which encapsulates this. 
Notice also we're able to use C++ standard template library functions. Now again, this is not a C++ education tutorial. This is as much showing you how to build it in an ESP32 environment. But the standard template library gives us things like dynamic strings. I can concatenate onto a string. I can pass a string around by copy or by reference. Um, all kinds of good things. And the standard template library also gives me things like hash maps and lists and vectors and queues and all kinds of other wonderful, wonderful functional libraries which I can use in my application. So what remains now is to compile this program. I'm going to add a uh, build target. A build target is a, a way to run the make system from within side Eclipse. So I run the make system and it compiles and it's done. If I run it again, it doesn't have to compile anything because everything's clean. If I change my source file, hit save, compile it. Oops. Sorry, let's hit that button again. Compile it, and it rebuilds the Hello World. Great. Now uh, we could we could um, uh, flash it from uh, from from memory, but let me flash it from here. And I've just realised I have not powered up my ESP32. So let me power up my ESP32, and because I'm using VirtualBox here, let me map it like this. And now I can run make flash and monitor and this is now going to push our application out to my ESP32 and run the monitor as soon as it starts. So it's flashing, flashing, flashing and it's running and we get the log messages hello Neil and bonjour Neil and that was because the code here set created an instance of the greeting class set the name neil called the hello english method which uh, logged hello and then my name and hello french down gave us the bonjour neil entry there so very fast stuff uh lots uh, lots of goodness here but hopefully uh, you can follow uh, along at the high levels of what i did if you've got any questions let's post them through the esp32.com forum and hopefully this gives us some new insight into what it takes to build c plus plus applications in our esp32 environment thanks guys and i'll talk to you later bye for now